Hey guys, welcome to Solo React Talk. Today is Warcraft Monday and I'm going to be reacting to Nerubian Law with Platinum WoW Wrath of the Lich King Classic on the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. If you want to check out my other reactions to uh, World of Warcraft content, remember that the Warcraft Monday playlist card is going to be at the top. Just click on it and be able to access them. If you want to check out the original video as well as World of Warcraft and Platinum Wow's YouTube channels, the links are in the description below. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one, go. In World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King Classic, there are plenty of enemies you can find all across the surface of Northrend. But sometimes the real threat you need to worry about is what lurks beneath the ice. The sprawling city of Azul Narub and the insectoids called the Nerubians is Northrend's dark kept secret. How did they get here? Who do they serve? And how can you make sure that they never get within a 50 foot radius of you because by the light they are horrifying? Well thankfully I can answer some of those questions. My name is Platinum Wow, and let me give you my interpretation of these earth dwelling nightmare fueled creatures. Our story begins 16,000 years ago. The troll and old god insects called the Akir waged war with one another in violent battles. The trolls pushed the insectoids all across to different corners of Azeroth. Eventually, the trolls would be victorious in their war, but that does not mean all of the Akir necessarily died. These pockets of isolated creatures would eventually evolve into their own distinct races. For example, the ones in the southwestern side of the continent, by Ankaraj, would turn into the Karaji. Yeah, that reminds me of Bonnie 64. Um, what was it called? The Lord Scarab Adventures? Something like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fun times. Fun times. The ones in the southeast would turn into the Mantid. And finally, the ones in the north stumbled upon a Tolvir society and uh, subsequently killed or enslaved all of them. Now over time, these Akir would eventually evolve into the Nerubians we know today and repurpose the Tolvir architecture with a variety of other inspirations to make it look edgy and cool. Now between the time frame of 16,000 years ago to somewhere around modern day, the Nerubians stopped worshipping the old gods entirely and really we can only speculate on why. Perhaps they didn't have good contact with them, seeing as yogg saron and the rest were locked up in maximum security prison. Maybe it was because the old gods didn't try to assist them in some sort of manner during the previous war, so the Nerubians learned to resent them. Yeah, maybe it's both. You know, maybe it's because they cannot communicate with the old gods and also because uh, they felt betrayed, you know, during their war with the trolls. So yeah, it's possible in both um in both options yeah or perhaps the nerubians were just going through an angsty teenager phase revolting against authority with all their new brooding architecture point is the nerubians are in a unique position on azeroth because they are some of the few who don't worship any sort of gods and are their own independent faction but they don't worship any gods and they're their own independent faction huh well Someone's going to change all of that. <laughs> Someone with big armor and a long blade called Frostmore. Someone, yeah, he's just going to rock up in there and just cause havoc. Yeah, I'm just wondering how and when does he do that? This didn't stop them from expanding their empire to an incredible degree. They enslaved the Jormungar worms to help carve out their city of Ajol Nerub that is rumored to span half the length of Northrend. Now in the city, there are a bunch of different types of Nerubians that exist all with their own unique strengths and weaknesses. There are Nerubian spiders, flyers, and your normal basic run of the mill Nerubian. One of the more substantial sub-races are the Nerubian seers, who are the most intelligent beings in the entire faction, and you'll typically see them take on the roles of sorcerers or advisors. Advisors to who? Well... Spider Lords are the mighty leaders of the Nerubian society. Anu Barak is the king of kings in Ajol Nerub, who rules over his underground lair with an iron fist. This uh, Spider Lord, Spider Lord King, um, Anu Barak, can he fly? Because I can see he has, uh, you know, wings 
behind his back. I'm just wondering, can he fly something so huge like this? Can it actually fly? Um, yeah, that would be scary if you're fighting up against this guy and he starts flying around and he just pounces on you from the air. Yeah, that, that'll be just insane. Or should I say a claw or thorax or... Okay, hold on. Let me check here. Okay, so their arms are called raptorials. See, not only are you learning lore, but biology as well. Yes, yes, Platinum Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, point is, the Nerubians expanded their empire for thousands of years till a familiar threat you may be aware of dominated the landscape above. Wait, this is before um, Arthur's adorned the armor, right? This was before uh, Arthur's and uh, the, 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 the helmet were united, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's just Nazul who's just stuck in there. Mm. Atop the frozen throne, the spirit of the Orca Shaman Nerzul was encased in ice and was the first instance of a Lich King. From his throne, he used his immense psychic and necromantic powers to build an army of undead called the Scourge. And this sudden, rapidly expanding army did not go unnoticed by the Nerubians. They knew they needed to stop the Scourge as fast as possible before they spiraled out of control. Wait, wait a minute. So, these guys, the Nerubians, were not detected by the Scourge. The Scourge didn't even know these guys existed underground. But the Nerubians have decided to attack as a preemptive strike against the Scourge because of the potential threat they may have on them. But they don't even know you guys existed. So why are you doing this? You could have just stayed underground, kept yourselves quiet, you know, let the surfaces do what surface people do. <laughs> and then you guys just continue on with your lives underground. You know, you don't have to attack them. Okay. The insectoids use their complex network of caverns to their advantage and would hit the scourge fast and hard. Their first assault was on the Lich King's fortress of Ice Crown Citadel. Wait, so they attacked him right at his home? Wow. These guys are brave. Nerubians are brave. Much to the Scourge ruler's dismay, the Nerubians were immune to his telepathic powers of domination and the plague of undeath. <laughs> But the Lich King had one more trick up his sleeve. Bone Star! The Scourge will wash over this world as a swarm of death and destruction. Bone Star! Whoa, so that was Bonestorm? Oh. Even with their natural resistances, the Nerubians still could be raised into a death and be forced to join the ranks of the unstoppable Scourge. And although the Nerubians made a valiant attempt to dismantle the undead, their aggressive attacks would only attract the ire of the Lich King. Now an event called the War of the Spider was in full motion. It's a campaign of extermination and conversion into the undead. The Scourge army hit the underground kingdom of Ajul Narub with an unending wave of undead. With every dozen of Scourge they would slay, two dozen of them would stand in their place. If the Nerubians were going to survive this, they need to use everything at their disposal. Hadronox is a monolithic spider that was released by the Nerubians that slayed countless Scourge in the kingdom of Jol Nerub. Hadronox looks like he's undead himself. I mean, look at all of that. I don't know what, 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 yeah, the skin of, of the spider, yeah. It looks like Hadronox is already dead. 
Even to this day, when players enter the kingdom, he is still constantly slaying any and all undead who dare challenge him. But such strength was not enough to save the entire kingdom. Some New Rubians attempted to cut their losses and flee from the city and dig deeper into the earth. This would be a fatal mistake as they accidentally awakened the old god minions called the Faceless Ones deep within the earth. They look like squids mixed with elephants. Yeah, interesting. Now they were fighting a war on two fronts, and this would be the Nerubians' death knell along with their leader, Anubarak. <laughs> now raised into a death, Anubarak's mind was dominated by the Lich King, and unwillingly slaughtered any and all who resisted against his new master, even the Nerubian servants who once praised him. And long after the War of the Spider, the Traitor King would become one of Arthas' most valuable servants and help him in his venture to the Frozen Throne. Yes, go forth, my steed. But let's get back to the war. Yeah, no, the Nerubians, they lost big time. All of the slain members of the city were raised into a death to be loyal members of the Scourge, and various ziggurats in the city were transformed into floating necropolises, which would be a huge benefit to their new masters. Okay, so they also created ziggurats. Um, you know, I thought maybe the necropolises only came from Aldraxxus, but it seems like the Nerubians also created their own version of them, and the Scourge have been using them. Interesting. Okay. And most importantly, the Scourge marketing manager came in and explicitly stated that the Nerubians needed to change their names to ensure that they stay on brand with the Scourge. Yeah, management, new management is in now, guys. And the new management have their own ideas. You just have to go along with it. So, for example, the basic Nerubians, they're renamed to Crypt Fiends, and Spider Lords would be renamed to Crypt Lords for no particular reason other than they sound cool. And the Nerubian society was totally absorbed by the Scourge, and now... <laughs> Dear Nerubians, I own you. Sign here or die. Just unwillingly followed the Lich King's every command. Wait, or die? They're already dead, though. Anyways, it's still funny. <laughs> from their corrupted husk of their former city. And that's the end of our story. Okay, bye. No, 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 let's not have our story end on a depressing note. When players arrive at Northren years later during the Wrath of the Lich King, they team up with some of the few remaining Nerubians who have somehow survived the Scourge onslaught. This small group is called the Ajol Anak, and gives you quests for the two Nerubian dungeons, Ajol Nerub, and Anket, the Old Kingdom. So go forth, players, avenge the Nerubians, and reclaim the city of Ajol Nerub from the Scourge. And... While you're at it, get some loot, because, let's be honest, I know why you're there. Yeah, that's all you guys are there for. <laughs> you're not there to save a civilization, you're just there for the loot. But the fallen city of Ajol Nerub is not the only place you can explore Northrend. Oh, no, no, no. There are plenty of other places to explore and enemies to defeat who are not nearly as horrifying. <clears throat> Most of the time. In Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Okay guys, that's it with Nerubian Law with Platinum Wow, Wrath of the Lich King Classic World by the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. Um yeah. The Nerubians, the Drakari, and the Varkul, you know, all of them powerful civilizations that have just descended into the undead, you know? Uh, the Scourge really has upended all of these civilizations that were on Northrend. Um, but, you know, I'm not I'm not going to blame the Scourge alone, you know. The Drakari, they had their own issues. The Verkul, they had their own issues, as we know. And also the Nerubians, they did some terrible things in the past before they established themselves in Northrend. So, you know, all of these advanced societies have all fallen to their own arrogance. 
uh, uh, and to their own ambitions, you know. And the scourge now assumes them all into its collective, and the Lich King has a stronger army now, you know, with with the Nerubians uh, on his side, if I can say that. And yeah, it's just it's just bad, you know. What happens in Northrend with all of these civilizations? You know, it, it, it just seems that that place can't have a proper, you know, a, a civilization, proper cities. It, it just cursed. It's just cursed with death and destruction. And yeah, I'm just wondering what's next now for Northrend. What, what other civilization has, you know, turned to ash and been risen up uh, from the dead? I'm just wondering. I guess I'll figure that out, you know, <laughs> next week with another installment from Platinum WoW. Um, but yeah, it's just very sad what happened on Northrend. Okay guys, that's it uh, with Platinum WoW. Remember, if you want to check out the original video as well as uh, World of Warcraft YouTube channel and Platinum WoW's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. If you like my reaction, please give me a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and I will see you guys next week Monday. Okay, bye-bye.